the German barbarian Israelites, the Visigoths. Universal Center for Renovation presents historical and biblical Israelites. This video is strictly for educational purposes and commentary. The information is of biblical and secular historical literature, so enjoy. This video is about the history of the Israelites, the biblical Israelites, who were scattered in all nations, speaking all languages, including in German. The history of the German barbarian Israelites, the Visigoths. This is part two. Archaeology. History. And most importantly, biblical history, prophecy, where we can take a glimpse of the customs, laws, traditions of the actual biblical Hebrew Israelites and match them up with the modern day descendants of the ancient Hebrew Israelites. And our story begins in the city the ancient city of Syria, the ancient city called Dara Europis, and this is the Dara Europis synagogue. This synagogue was destroyed in the year 256 AD when the Romans, or well, the Eastern Romans, fought against the Parthians, who were a people of ancient Iran. Archaeologists, British archaeologists, excavated this region of Syria and found this amazing synagogue with the images, the pictorial images, the biblical Israelites drawn on its walls. This synagogue gave academia, professors, students of history, an interesting chance to look into the lives of the ancient Jews. And with these images of people of color, from dark complexions to light complexions, you would clearly see that these people painted on these walls in Syria were the ancestors of the German barbarians of Europe, of Western Europe. The physical types that exist on the walls of Derry Europis, of Moses, of Abraham, they're the same physical types that are depicted in manuscripts from Spain. 700 years later, 800 years later, of the children of these people depicting German, Western German barbarians of Western European history.
And for those in the audience who might not be so familiar with the history of the children of Israel, they are the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So let's start with the beginning, the progenitor of the 12 tribes of Israel, their father, Abraham. The story of the life of Abraham, as told in the narrative of the book of Genesis in the Hebrew Bible, revolves around the themes of posterity and land. He is said to have been called by the Most High, God, to leave the house of his father, Terah, and settle in the land of Canaan, which the Most High God now promises to Abraham and his progeny. This promise is subsequently inherited by Isaac, Abraham's son, by his wife Sarah, while Isaac, half brother Ishmael, is also promised that he will be the founder of a great nation. Abraham purchases a tomb, the cave of the patriarchs, at Hebron to be Sarah's grave thus establishing his right to the land. And in the second generation, his heir, Isaac, is married to a woman from his own kin, thus ruling the Canaanites out of any inheritance. Abraham later marries Keturah and has six more sons, but on his death, when he is buried beside Sarah, it is Isaac who receives all Abraham's goods while the other sons receive only gifts this article of Abraham can be found in Wikipedia listed under the title Abraham the basic overview of this article can be understood in the light of a few statements Abraham was living in a city called Ur in a region called Chaldea with his family. His family was following the customs of the land, practices which included praying to the idols and praying to the dead. The Most High God spoke to Abraham and commanded him to leave his family in that region and he would give him and his progeny or descendants a land free from bad traditions, bad customs, and bad laws. Abraham's children will become a great nation and they will become priests and kings and they will teach the nations of the world the most high God laws and they will establish a kingdom that would bring worldwide peace and prosperity. Although Abraham fathered many sons, his promise was ultimately limited to his son Isaac and to Isaac's son Jacob whose name was later changed to Israel and so after the death of Jacob his children Jacob's children would be known as the children of Israel and he and he the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob and he said unto Abraham Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with a great substance. Genesis chapter 15 verse 13 to 14. The Most High God gave to Abraham a sign and a future prediction to indicate what nation of his descendants would be his elect and chosen people. The one nation that he chose would become slaves in the land of Egypt for 400 years and this happened to the children of Israel.
They are the people of Israel, chosen to be God's adopted children. God revealed his glory to them. He made covenants with them and gave them his law. He gave them a privilege of worshiping him and receiving his wonderful promises. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are their ancestors, and Christ himself was an Israelite as far as his human nature is concerned. And he is God, the one who rules over everything and is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. Romans chapter 9, verse 4 to 5. NLT. And remember the scriptures. The children of Israel were called gods. So the Messiah is the top son of God. He sits at the right hand of the Father. The people of Israel had lived in Egypt for 430 years. Exodus chapter 12, verse 40, NLT. And the prophecy came to pass, and the Egyptians enslaved the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service and mortar and brick. Exodus chapter 1, verse 14. Painting from tomb, Erech Meyer, 15th century B.C. A fresco, a wall painting, located inside the 2,000-year-old synagogue in Dera Europa, Syria. This is a painting of Moses. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. And I am concerned about their suffering. Exodus chapter 3 verse 7 NIV And the Most High God sent Moses, a Israelite from the tribe of Levi. He sent him to go and deliver his people Israel out of Egyptian slavery. Exodus, book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 31 to 33, NIV, the Exodus. During the night, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Up, leave my people, you and the Israelites, go worship the Lord as you have requested. Take your flocks and herds as you have said. And go, and also bless me. And so, the twelve tribes of Israel left Egypt. The book of Exodus, chapter 28, verse 21, KJV. And the stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel, twelve, according to their names, like the engravings on a signet, every one with his name shall they be according to the twelve tribes. And your father's lineage determined of what tribe in Israel you descended from. So if you were descended of the patriarch Judah, you were from the tribe of Judah. If you was descended of the patriarch Ephraim, then you was an Ephraimite. The Apostle Paul wrote letters to the church of Corinth, demonstrating their Israelite heritage and ancestry. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 to 4, 
KJV. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat of the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drink of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ the Messiah the 12 tribes of Israel or Israelites from the 2000 year old synagogue Dera Europis located in Syria For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all the people that are upon the face of the earth. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6 KJV. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob made promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and to their descendants, the children of Israel. A promise to deliver them out of Egyptian bondage. A promise to make them priests and kings. A promise to give them a land of their own. All these promises were fulfilled. Now Israel had a choice to make. Israel's choice, blessings or curses. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 26 to 28. Today I'm giving you a choice you may choose the blessing or the curse. You will get the blessing if you listen and obey the commands of the Lord your God that I have told you today. But you will get the curse if you refuse to listen and obey the commands of the Lord your God. So don't stop living the way I command you today and don't follow of the gods that you don't know. Ancient Jewish history, the two kingdoms from 920 BCE or before Christ's era to 597 BCE. This is from the Jewish Virtual Library. King Solomon created the wealthiest and most powerful central government the Hebrews would ever see, but he did so at an impossibly high cost. Land was given away to pay for his extravagances, and people were sent into forced labor into Tyre in the north. When Solomon died between 926 and 922 BCE, the ten northern tribes refused to submit to his son Rehoboam and revolted. From this point on, there will be two kingdoms of Hebrews in the north Israel and in the south Judah. The Israelites formed their capital in the city of Samaria and the Judeans kept their capital in Jerusalem. These kingdoms remained separate states for over 200 years. The 12 tribes of Israel were all descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
the tribes were not an homogeneous group. These images are from the period of the Neo-Assyrian Empire. These images were drawn by the or carved by the Assyrians showing the distinct qualities of this one people. On the left is a man from the southern kingdom of Judah but obviously woolly hair. On the right is a king from the northern tribes of Ephraim with obviously straight hair. They were one people that had distinctive different physical types. All the tribes did not look the same. One people with different looks. After a certain amount of time had passed, the Israelites began to worship false gods. The book of Numbers, chapter 25, contemporary English version, the Israelites worship Baal. Chapter 25, verse 1. While the Israelites were camped at Acacia, some of the men had sex with Moabite women. These women then invited the men to ceremonies where sacrifices were offered to their gods. The men ate the meat from the sacrifices and worshipped the Moabite gods. The Lord was angry with Israel because they had worshipped the god Baal Peel. So he said to Moses, take the Israelite leaders who are responsible for this and have them killed in front of my sacred tent where everyone can see. Maybe then I will stop being angry with the Israelites. The northern tribes of Israel followed the customs of the heathen nations around them. They started to worship the idol Baal, engage in ceremonial sex magic, engage in worshiping the dead. This was taught to them by the priest of Baal, worshiping the stars and other heavenly bodies. This act of joining themselves to other nations caused the Most High God of Israel to exile the northern tribes out of their land before Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi would also follow these heathen practices later in time. So eventually, the Most High God sent his prophets to warn Israel away from these practices that he disliked. One such prophet that was sent to the northern tribes of Israel was a man or prophet named Elijah. Men in togas and tunics witnessed the miracle performed by Elijah with the burning altar that had been soaked with water, fresco from Dera Europa's synagogue. So, King Ahab of the northern tribes of Israel sent word throughout all Israel and assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Get two bulls for us. Let's Baal's 
profit, choose one for themselves and let them cut it into pieces and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God and I will call on the name of the Lord, the God who answers by fire. He is God. First Kings chapter 18, verse 20 to 24. So, even after Elijah showed the nation of Israel, the ones of the northern tribes, miracles from the Most High God, they continued to worship false gods. This passage is from the NET Bible. N-E-T Bible. God will raise up the Assyrians to attack Israel. The book of Hosea, chapter 8, verse 1 to 3. Sound the alarm. An eagle looms over the temple of the Lord, for they have broken their covenant with me and have rebelled against my law. Israel cries out to me, My God, we acknowledge you. But Israel has rejected what is morally good. An enemy will pursue him. The deportation of the Israelites after the destruction of Israel, the northern tribes, in the subjugation of Judah, the southern tribes, by the Neo-Assyrian Empire from the 8th to the 7th century BCE. This passage is also from the Net Bible, the book of Hosea, chapter 9, verse 1 to 3. Fertility cults, festivals have intoxicated Israel, ritual, sex magic, praying to the dead, praying to the sun and the moon and the stars. Chapter 9. Verse 1, O Israel, do not rejoice jubilantly like the nations, for you are unfaithful to your God. You love to receive a prostitute's wages on all the floors where you thresh your grain. Threshing floors and wine vats will not feed the people, and new wine only deceives them. Assyrian exile will reverse the Egyptian exodus. They will not remain in the Lord's land exile. Ephraim will return to Egypt. They will eat ritually unclean food in Assyria. Jehu, king of the northern tribes of Israel, bowing at the feet of the king of Assyria. And so the northern tribes of Israel were taken into captivity, into bondage, into the land of Assyria. The ten tribes of Israel went into captivity in the land of Assyria, which is located in modern day Iraq today but they didn't stay they left the Near East and moved into a region of the world that is called Osareth Osareth according to the Jewish encyclopedia the name of the land beyond the great river far away from the habitation of man in which the ten tribes of Israel will dwell, observing the laws of Moses until the time of the restoration, according to Estrus and the Apocrypha. Columbus 
identified America with this land. The land known as Osaref. The land inhabited by the ten tribes of Israel. The northern tribes. Indians of the Americas. That is how Christopher Columbus identified the northern kingdom of Israel in the Americas. Indians of the Americas, North, Central, South America, and the Caribbean. There does exist a school of thought or ideology that teaches that when the northern tribes, the ten tribes left Assyria, they went into Europe. And Europe is Osareth. But that is not historically accurate. Osareth is not Europe. Europe was inhabited by the children of Japheth. Genesis chapter 10. Osareth would be a land where mankind never dwelt before. There also exists a school of thought or philosophy or ideology that teaches Osareth is located in North Africa or West Africa. Osareth is not North Africa. The children of Put According to Genesis chapter 10, lived in Libya or North Africa. And West Africa was also a place that Romans explored. This wasn't an area that mankind never dwelt in before. This part of history might help people better understand why during the time of the Assyrian captivity you find Israelites traveling into Europe but not the ten tribes. The Israelites that went into Europe was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. The ten tribes stuck together and moved out of the Near East into the land of Osirith. You can read about this actual historic event in the Tanakh, the Bible, and in the Assyrian Chronicles, also known as Sennacherib's Prism. Assyrian Siege of Jerusalem, Wikipedia. The Siege. Sources from both sides claimed victory. The Assyrians claimed victory. And the Israelites, Judites, claimed the victory. The Judites or biblical authors in the Tanakh and Sennacherib in his prism. Sennacherib claimed the siege and captured of many Judean cities. But only the siege and not the capture of the city of Jerusalem. Sennacherib captured many Judean cities and took the Judeans also into captivity but he did not capture the city of Jerusalem these Judeans Judah Benjamin and Levi were taken into Assyrian captivity the Judeans that were taken into Assyrian captivity, scattered into Europe, Asia, the Far East, Southwest Asia, India, China, Japan, North Africa, West Africa, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi in Europe, Africa, and Asia. Israelites in Europe are not the ten tribes. They are the children of Benjamin, Judah, and Levi. 
Israelites that were scattered in Africa are not the ten tribes. They are the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi lived in Europe, Africa, and Asia. Josephus, who was an Israelite, a Levite, a first century historian, knew this, taught this, and the complete works of Josephus, Josephus makes this comment. Wherefore, there are but two tribes in Asia and Europe, subject to the Romans. Only two tribes, meaning Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, which sometimes wasn't counted, but he was a Levite. While the ten tribes, the lost tribes, the ten tribes, are beyond Euphrates till now, and are an immense multitude, and not to be estimated by numbers. Beyond Euphrates is not Asia, because he mentioned they're not in Asia or in Europe. At this point in time, the ten tribes were in the Americas, an immense multitude, not to be estimated by numbers. According to Josephus, there existed two tribes only in Europe, Asia. He didn't say Africa because at the time, the African continent was called Libya. So Judah, Benjamin, and Levi in Europe, Africa, and Asia scattered in Asia, Europe, and Africa. The northern kingdom of Israel moved to a country never where mankind dwelt. According to the book, 2nd Estrus 13 and the Apocrypha, verse 40, those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea, the king, whom Salmanasar, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, Euphrates, and so came they into another land, Assyria, and modern-day Iraq. But they took this counsel among themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen, the Near East, and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, that they might there keep their statues, which they never kept in their own land, a country never where mankind dwelt, in the Americas. So these are images of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi from around the time of Josephus, from the synagogue of Dera Europis. On the left, you can see an image of Ezekiel. On the right, you can see an image of Moses leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. And on the bottom right, you can see a whole wall of images from Dera Europis. The image on the left, it looks like it's three men, but it's actually only one. It's the prophet Ezekiel, and he's dressed in a Persian style clothing where you have the tunic, the trousers, and the riding boots. This is a style that the Israelites took with them. This is a style that you will find the German barbarians wearing. You can find this style in Persia, Central Europe, West Europe, Central Asia, China, Japan. India. This is a style of clothing that in the old martial arts movies, the Shaw Brothers, Kung Fu movies, this is what they wore. Because of course, the Israelites were scattered in Asia too, and they became the practitioners of the martial art or the martial arts in Asia. And of course, on the right, you can see the image of Moses dressed in the Roman toga or robes. As you can see, both images are from the same synagogue. One is a man of chocolate brown complexion. 
The other man is of light brown complexion. The artwork is consistent. Israelites of different shades of brown. And these are Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, the tribes that were left in Asia, Africa, and Europe. And on the bottom right, now we have images of Jews or Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, Israelites of the first century Roman Empire. On the left, you can see a man who looks typically like a black American. On the far right, you can see a man who's Judah, Benjamin, and Levi who can pass for an Latino, Hispanic, Puerto Rican, Cuban, or Mexican. The Israelites varied even in the Middle East. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi can look like your typical African American, or back then, he could look like your typical Latino or Hispanic, or in some cases, men from Sicily, Italy, or parts of Ireland. This is typically more realistic paintings of Israelites in the first century, first century Roman Empire. Here's more artwork of the Jews, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi in the first century Roman Empire. This can be compared to the painting, the frescoes, or frescoes and Dere Europis. The more realistic artwork gives you a better or more complete understanding of what Dere Europis was trying to display. Here's some more artwork to compare with Dera Europis, the more realistic paintings and the fresco from Dera Europis. Some more examples of Jews or Judah, Benjamin, and Levi from the first century living inside the Roman Empire. The comparison to the Dera Europis fresco is amazing. Once again, we have the image of Ezekiel. So you can compare dark brown, light brown, everything in between. The Judites, the Benjamites, and the Levites. Israel, the southern kingdom, different shades of brown. This is a comparison. Now, we're going to jump completely to Europe. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, the Ezekiel, Dere Europis painting or fresco compared to the Visigoth, German warriors in Spain, Visigoths, German warriors in Spain, who were Israelites from Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. The Visigoths manuals or manuscripts were 700 years later from the Dera Europis frescoes. Same people, same clothing style. Ezekiel wears the Persian style tunic, trousers, and riding boots. The Visigoths wear the tunic, trousers, and riding boots. It's the same style, same style of clothing, same people, just living in a different region of the world. The Visigoths lived in Spain in Germany. Mainly there were Germanic barbarians who lived in Germany. And this on the left is Moses leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. The shields and the spears. On the right, the Visigoths with the shields and the spears. Same people. These images are 700 years apart. The Dere Europis is older, around 2,000 years. You could say the first century. The Visigoth images are from the 700 to 1000 AD. Same people living in a different region of the world. The Visigoths, the German barbarians, were Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. The ten tribes were in the Americas. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi lived in Europe, Africa, and Asia. So this image 
of Ezekiel with the trousers, the tunic, and the riding boots is a Persian style of outfit or garment. It's a Hebrew style of clothing. But the German barbarians and the Celtic warriors wore this type of clothing because the Israelites and the Assyrian or Judah, Benjamin, and Levi in the Assyrian captivity and the Persian captivity eventually found themselves migrating into Germany. So the Celts and the Germans wore these clothing styles, the tunic, the trousers, and the riding boots. Ancient Inventions, a book by Peter James and Nick Thorpe. Who wore the pants? Good question. Trousers were popular among the Persians of Iran and in Europe, among the Celts and Germans. However, they never caught on with either the Greeks or the Romans, who always thought of them as slightly barbarous. Even though the great philosopher Pythagoras was said to have worn pants, as late as A.D. 397, the Roman Emperor Honorius legislated against men who dared appear in the venerable city of Rome in trousers. However, the ancient Persian word for trousers, pajamas, eventually found its way into the English language during the 17th century as a term denoting pants for lounge and bedroom wear. Persian and German style, tunic, trousers, and riding boots. These are modern representations of what Germans and Celts look like and Persians. We're not concerned about that. We're concerned about customs and clothing styles. On the left, the Persians, if you look at the pants, you'll see the image on the right, the Celts and Germans, same style. The Celts and Germans in this picture aren't wearing tunics, but the trousers. Because the Celts and Germans came out of the Persian Empire into Germany. Persian trousers worn by Celts and Germans. When the Celts and Germans entered Germany. They still had the dress code of the Persian Empire. And they were using some words from Persia. So the scholars labeled the Germanic language as Indo European because they found Persian words in the German language. Here's another image to compare the Persian trousers and the Celts and German trousers. On the right, there's another image to compare of Celts and Germans wearing Persian style trousers. Persian trousers worn by Celts and Germans. And this is another image to compare Hebrew and Persian style clothing. On the left is Ezekiel with the tunic, the trousers, and the riding boot. On the right, we have what appears to be Asian men with the trousers, the tunics, and the riding boots. It's the same style. This is the clothing of people from the north, from Asia, from Eastern, Western Europe, the Hebrew Israelites wore this type of clothing. And this is an image of a man doing some type of cosplay. He's portraying a Viking. The tunic, the trousers, and not the boots, but it's a footwear that basically has the same style of the Hebrew Persian style. And he's portraying a Viking. 
And here is another man dressed in the attire of the North, a Celt or a German. He could be from Scandinavia, England, Germany, Russia, Bulgaria. But again, the Hebrew Persian style is there. The tunic, the trousers, and the riding boots. And on the right, we have artwork to compare the Hebrew Persian style of clothing. You have the tunic, which is covered up by chainmail or armor, the trousers, and the riding boots. This is an image of a northern barbarian warrior or a Hebrew northern barbarian. This is the same exact type of style that was used by the Israelites in the land of Israel. And this can be clearly seen from the artwork, the paintings in Dera Europis. On the left is a modern painting of a man in armor. On the right, paintings, 2,000 years old paintings of Israelites in chainmail and armor. Same style, same people, Hebrew Israelites, mainly in Europe, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. You could always have exceptions, but the tribes, the 10 tribes were always living together after exile. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi were scattered among the nations. That's the difference. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi were scattered among the nations. The ten tribes, Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, Asher, Naphtali, they were all living together away from the other nations. They lived in a place where mankind never dwelt. They lived alone in the Americas. And once again, we can turn to the medieval manuscripts left by the German barbarians who were Israelites, comparing them to the Ezekiel, the tunics, the trousers, and the riding boots, the Persian style. This is from medieval manuscripts, and you can look at the Afro style here that Ezekiel has and that the German barbarians have this curly woolly afro style here same people same people and for proof or receipts verification from academia we can turn to the book the golden age of the moor edited by Ivan van Sertema This book is going for $369 online, basically $400. This book has very valuable information and other books like this book. On page 53, figure 18, black Christian soldier of Spain fighting invading Moors of 710 to 711 and the date of this image is from 1150 this is medieval artwork this book contains medieval artwork of Christians in Europe German Christian barbarians fighting against the Moors you have these dark complexion Christian barbarian German warriors fighting against Muslim dark skin Moors this is amazing stuff and these guys were Judah Benjamin and Levi and the artwork from the Roman Empire era show that Judah Benjamin and Levi some look like black Americans some look like Latinos 
So you know in Germany you have these guys who are dark complexion. Some look like African Americans. Some look like Latinos. And you know some had blonde hair and blue and gray eyes. Because these were alpha males. These were not beta males. They saw a woman that they found attractive. They made that woman their wife or their concubines. So their children varied in complexion and eye color. This is interesting history. Interesting Israelite history. And this is an image of the Visigoths. From the Van Sertima book and from the actual manuscript. These were black, so-called black Christians, German barbarians of Spain, Visigoths. The German Visigoths. The German barbarians of Western European history. They were Hebrew Israelites from the tribe of Benjamin, Judah, or Levi. If you are in Western Europe or of German descent, you would be descended of these people. If your line, paternal line, went back to the Israelites, you would be Judah, Benjamin, or Levi. The Visigoths were a Germanic people united under the rule of a king and living within the Roman Empire during late antiquity. The Visigoths were subsequently settled in southern Gaul, modern day France, as Fratereti. They made a treaty of peace with the Roman Empire until they overthrew the Roman, Western Roman Empire. As Fatoretti, Treaty to the Romans, a relationship that was established in 418. At that time, the Western Roman Empire was controlled by Romans of Israelite descent who overthrew the original Romans. But that's a history for another video. This developed as an independent kingdom. The Visigoth established a kingdom. France with its capital at Toulouse France and they extended their authority into Hispania and Spain these were territories France and Spain were territories controlled by the Western Roman Empire the Visigoths came and took those regions from the Western Romans and established kingdoms of their own in former Roman territories. So in this time in history, you had Israelite fighting Israelites. They were fighting each other under different names, under different religions. Gots fighting or Israelite Gots fighting Israelite Romans. Israelite Moors fighting Israelite Gots. Eventually, all this infighting will come to destroy all their domination and powers in all the regions that they lived in. So this infighting was to their own detriment. The gospel was preached to them so they could overcome their differences. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, 
barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Colossians chapter 3 verses 11. But no man could bring them all together. Only the Messiah could bring all these scattered Israelites who are living in different philosophies in different regions of the world. Only the Most High and His Son, the Messiah, could bring all these people together.